Come Holy Spirit, come fill my heart, refresh my soul. This is your season of grace come with your host, Spirit, Patrick Henry Edit. Get ready for Grace Revolution. to Jacob. It does not take us to Israel. It takes us to Abraham. So, all the promises of Abraham, in Christ Jesus, they are your promises. And God expects that Abraham is, because you are the seed of Abraham by faith. Faith, what makes Abraham the friend of God is not because he obeyed the law. It was because he, he believed in God. He relied on God. And was credited to him as righteousness. So in Christ Jesus, we have a righteousness like that of Abraham. And the righteousness is not like that of, the, of Israel, achieved through the law. Our righteousness is the righteousness of Abraham, achieved by faith. And the blessing we have is the connection of Abraham. So this. Blessing now, this gift of the Lord becomes your own. Look at that. The Lord said to Abraham, after the Lord had parted from him, lift up your eyes from where you are. Shh, from where you are. It may be you are depressed right now. He said, lift up your eyes from where you are. From that place of depression, from that place of rejection, from that place of confusion and deception, from that place where you don't have anything good will come. If you lift up your eyes from where you are, you must lift up your eyes from where you are. As long as you keep looking at where you are, you will never get anywhere. You will never know anything. Because where you are may not be the best place, but where you are is not a problem. Abraham was not found in a good place, but God told him, lift up your eyes from where you are. Standing from where you are, but don't look at where you are. You are permitted to stand where you are, but look beyond where you are. See from where you are, don't see where you are. It is a different thing to see where you are, and it's another thing to see from where you are. See where you are, condemns you. See where you are, limits you. See where you are, castrates you. That's power from you. But when you see from where you are, you can ignore the shouts of where you are. You can ignore the adversity of the place that you are. Tell yourself, from this moment, I am seeing from where you are. Thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for your thoughts. There is just one thing we can expect. First, you are the God who expects your thoughts. And the way to bring your result is your word. Now, when your word is coming, I am ready. 
according to your purpose and plan, I have no agenda. I have no motive. Your plan is my plan, but your motive is not my motive. Your son Jesus is my life. My qualification in the Holy Ghost is my helper. Go ahead. And let us have the opportunity to allow us to You see, it's your territory begins with a vision. Do you know you have a territory? Or do you know you have territories? That's the first thing that I have. At the root and the foundation of the call of Adam, and the relationship between God and that man is the issue of territory. Genesis chapter 12, you'll be surprised. God never talked about heaven. God never told Abraham about heaven. Be careful. God did not tell Abraham about heaven. He did not tell him about New Jerusalem. He didn't tell him anything other than the land. The territory. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1. The Lord had said to Abraham, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. Tell somebody, land. In that land, I will make you into a great nation. Every promise God is making now is based upon the land. In that land, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. In that land, I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So, Abraham left as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions he had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan. And they arrived there. Tell somebody there. Yeah. They left there to there. Verse 6. Abraham traveled through the land. How many times have we seen the land? We have seen like three times right now. Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moray at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. It does not matter which Canaanites are there now. At that time, they were. Maybe this time they are. But they are not going to be there for long. That's why taking territory is strategic. Because the land is never vacant. There are always occupants. <laughs> I don't know when I'm talking to somebody. That's why if you are not careful, you cannot recognize your land. Because there are people, there are things occupying the land. <laughs> the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, this is like a confirmation. In case you, you are dismayed, in case you are confused at the sight of these Canaanites, don't mind them. Look at that verse. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. Don't mind these Canaanites. <laughs> because Abraham saw the Canaanites. Am I talking to you? Listen to me. Don't know which Canaanites you are seeing. <laughs> There may be a particular Canaanite you see and you doubt, how can this be mine? And these things are there. These things could be sickness, could be anything. These things could be anything, obstruction. Anything that obstructs your view. Anything that prevents you from seeing. If anything that makes you doubt. Anything. God is telling you, <laughs> ignore these things, this Canaanite. I will give it to you. It's a promise. Tell somebody it's a promise. You see, God doesn't tell you everything at the same time. At first, he doesn't tell. He just tells you something. So when you hear something, walk with something. Move with something. He told Abraham, come. 
and he came, he saw the land. Abraham was checking out on the land. You know, you like to check out. Check out on the land and you see something. And he said, Abraham must have been doubting. Ah, this land is mine. What of these guys here? They build houses. They have everything. This is a place that people are, have settled in, on in a la, for a long time. So what am I going to do? Abraham must have been meditating and telling himself, maybe I'm in a wrong territory. Maybe this is not where God ex expected me to be. Maybe he will give me direction. When God came, he didn't tell him, you miss your place. You miss your, pla your steps. He told him, this is the place. I will give it to you. Don't mind the Canaanites. Tell somebody, don't be bothered by them. Tell another person, don't be bothered by the Canaanites. It is your territory. When we talk about the call of God, a lot of people think, oh, call to be a prophet. Call. No, no. The call to be a child of God is the greatest call. Being a child of God is the first call. The greatest call is the call to be a child of God. A wonderful thing that it is that we have been called God's children. That's who we are. What we shall be in the future. God doesn't praise people for being called prophets or being called priests or being called what? The scripture in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called what? Children of God. And that is what we are. That's the first call. And this call comes with a promise. This call is in a, is in, is, is in, is in a position in the same thing that came upon Abraham. When, when the call came upon Abraham, his, his status changed, his location changed. When the call of being a child of God comes upon you, you are changed. The scripture says, whoever is in Christ Jesus is who? Is a new creation. So there is a call upon your life. Tell somebody there is a call upon your life. The call of God upon your life is the call of being a child of God, being God's ambassador, being God's descendant. And it comes with a promise. And the promise is that I will give you this land. At some moment, your marriage you discover is a territory. At some moment, you discover your health is a territory. Just you discover your, your profession is a territory. You discover your career is a territory. Discover your vision is your territory. This territory will become different things at different times. When God called you, there is a purpose. And the purpose has to do with territory. Territory is space, a place of life. A place of increasing and prospering in. A place of living your life. Where, what God has given you to live your life in, from and on. That's your territory. Where God has given you to live your life in, from and on, that is your territory. Am I talking to somebody? If God has called you to live your life on business, that's your territory. Any dimension of your life that God has fashioned as a gift of life for you, there's a promise. That's your territory. Abraham, first of all, lived as a foreigner, as an alien in his territory. You see, let me tell you something. Where you would possess tomorrow, you are first of all a foreigner today. That's it. Be humble. Humility is the greatest power on earth. Humility makes you live like an alien in a place you will possess tomorrow. Abraham walked around. He saw Canaanites. Canaanites were eating and drinking. They were, they did, he didn't even have a... Abraham had to buy a place to bury the wife. But that was his land. And Jacob lay down on that same land with stone as his... what. His pillow, and God told him, This land on which you lie, I will give it to you. He was hopeless, he was desperate, he was running from something and afraid of everything. But God says, You may be afraid, but you are the king of this place, you are the owner of this thing. I want to tell you that place where you are insecure, you are actually the owner, you don't know. You be careful where you are right now. That's why I'm talking about humility. Because when we say this thing, they are not far away. So be careful how you live today because you are an alien in that place. But it may just be where you are appointed to rule tomorrow. If you understand me, say, I have taken note. There are certain things that you can do that can change your destiny. 
Certain little mistakes that can change your destiny for evil or for good. Humility is the greatest friend you need. When you are on your way up, you need humility more than you need dollars. Genesis chapter 30, okay? Then the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had parted from him, lift up your eyes from where you are and look north and south, east and west. All the land that you see, put it in New King James Version. For all the land which you see, I give to you. Put it in King James Version. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it. So there is an agreement. All the land that you see. So it begins with seeing. And I want you to be careful how you see. Don't see according to how others see you. Others may see you right now as an alien, as a foreigner, as somebody without rights. But see yourself as God sees you. God says, all that you can see is your own. Let's go to the next step. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. He said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold of it. This is NIV. Go to a New King James Version. He said, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven does what? Suffers violence. What does it mean to suffer violence? It takes violence. It's about violence. Response to violence. You see, God gave land free to Abraham. He lived like a foreigner there. His son Isaac lived there like a foreigner. People treated him with in, as, you know, as nothing. They didn't respect him. They dealt with him. Jacob was there like a foreigner. And the, the children of Abraham, the grandchildren in Jacob, they were foreigners and they eventually went to Egypt as slaves. But he didn't change the promise. No matter what you go through, the promise will not be changed. How did they conquer the land? They didn't donate the land to them. The Canaanites did not tell them, okay, we have been told that God gave you this land. Oh yeah, we are tired, come and take the land. Some of us will like that one. Our witches will tell us, I'm tired of attacking you. Take your blessing. <laughs> oh, that one will be beautiful, right? tell somebody it will never happen <laughs> you have to take it <laughs> tell, start up and tell three people it will never happen <laughs> you have to take it <laughs> so when the scripture says it suffers violence it means the territory will come to you through violence engagement violent engagement when we talk about warfare you cannot fight without blood when it comes to issues of territory troublemakers tell somebody troublemakers so when we are talking about spiritual warfare it is real your marriage will not come to you without a fight or your marriage will not take the shape that God made it to be without a fight. Your health will not be given to you as a gift on a platter of grace and gold. He say, ah, we don't, we like, it. no, 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 you fight. If it is the promise of God, then there is a fight. The problem people will have is that God has promised, so let me wait for it. God promised Abraham, but the children have had to fight for it. Fight is necessary. The scripture says, from the time of John the Baptist, from the days of John, till when? Until when? If you read this scripture tomorrow, it is still now. If you read it 20 years from now, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, it was violent. 1,000 years from now, if Jesus 
does not come before that time. It's still going to be violent. There will never be a day you wake up and matters of the kingdom. When we talk about the kingdom, we are talking about the rulership of God, the administration of grace, the administration of God. God in his administration, in his kingdom, has given you some blessing. It could be marriage, it could be health, it could be children, it could be business, it could be finance, it could be anything. It could be industry, it could be whatever it is that God has made as a promise towards you. Any day you wake up, it will still be now. Until now, it suffers violence. Until now, there has to be a fight. Until now, there has to be a, an engagement that is violent. An engagement that will cause you to sweat. An engagement that will take sleep from you certain night. An engagement that you, you sit on a table to eat and something tells you it is not time to eat. I don't know whether have you been there before you come back from somewhere hungry and you want to sit down something tells you no it's time to take yourself to where you can pray there are some days your stomach revolts against food because there is something that your life demands your peace and it's in your territory tell somebody i take no rest until i take it which means if rest is placed before you and taking it is placed before you. Tell rest, wait for me. Let me take it. Tell rest, wait. Stand up and tell rest. Rest, wait for me. Tell easy life, easy life, wait for me. Tell comfort, comfort, wait for me. Tell enjoyment, enjoyment, wait for me. I take it first. Glory to God. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Friends and Partners of Grace Family Global Outreach. You can be part of this grace revolution by becoming a Covenant Partner today. Allow God to use you. Our account details are as follows. Bank, Zenith Bank. Account name, Grace Family Global Outreach. Account number, 10142. 978-63 For inquiries, please call 081-804-33225 or 090-738-38742 To all our covenant partners and friends, we say thank you. Like the widow of Zarephath, your oil will never run dry. To order for the books, messages, and other resource materials, please call or send an SMS to 080-660-46346 or 081-804-33225. Videos are also available on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Grace Family Outreach. To stay connected, like us on Facebook at Grace Family Outreach or visit our website at www.gracecommission.org